So now we're going to access our patient who we've already uh, numbed and prepped. So in getting our supplies, I always recommend looking at the policy prior to going into the patient's room because it will tell you in the policy what you need to bring in so that you don't forget anything. So you will need a port access kit. If you anticipate the patient is going to be admitted, you'll wanna put a bio patch on there. You will need to grab a needleless adapter, a clave. And then you'll also want to grab a sterile saline. So this is a sterile saline, and they often are attached to the kit, but sometimes they fall off. And this saline that we all see all the time, this is not sterile, so we can use these on ports, but you don't want to drop it into your sterile field. So as soon as you open up your port kit, the first thing you will see is a mask and one set of gloves. You do have a second set of gloves in the kit. So opening up your kit, you'll wanna drop those other supplies that you need into your field. And then I'll open up my set of sterile gloves here. If you forgot something at this point, you realize that something is missing, you can always grab that if you don't have somebody who can get it for you because you do have a second set of sterile gloves that you can use if you needed to. So the first thing on top is our needle and this is a power injection needle to go with the power injection port and it says that on there. It also says it on the clamp on the needle. So you will also see that here on the clamp if you weren't the one to access the patient. Um, you still have that right there for you. So putting your clave onto the end of your needle and then with your sterile saline, you can prime your needle. So this is ready to go. The next thing in your pile here is a sterile drape. This is nice when somebody's shirt is getting in the way and you can tuck it right underneath their shirt to keep that from falling into your field there. If you had to touch the patient to move things out of the way, here's your second set of sterile gloves. So you could change your gloves here. And then you also have skin prep, there's gauze in here if you needed to add a little padding around the needle, if it was sticking out of the skin and you wanted to pad around it, that is fine to put in there if it's done in the sterile field. If it's gauze after placement, like on a pick line, you wanna have that removed. In this situation for padding, it's, a, it's totally appropriate. And then you have your Tegaderm as well. So you'll want to Clean above that port. Remember, this patient has already been numbed. And I wouldn't re recommend doing it right over your sterile field like I'm doing in this video. And you wanna clean for 30 seconds. We know that a 30 second scrub is more effective than sterile procedure. So after you've done a nice 30 second scrub, you'll wanna let that dry completely. Like I said before, it does take a long time to dry on this plastic. So for timing, I'm gonna go ahead and move on and pretend that it is totally dry. So when you go to access your patient with these needles, you wanna hold the two yellow wings back and this is what stabilizes the needle. The clear wings on here is what engages the safety. So you don't wanna access by holding like this. You wanna access by holding the yellow part, which is actually holding the needle. Remove the protective cover, stabilize the port with your non-dominant hand. Taking the 90 degree angle, you just go straight into that port. Those yellow wings then go down. And if you're going to add a bio patch, it's a little hard on this dummy because it's very close to the skin here, but this is actually gonna go underneath the clear plastic wings. See if I can get that nicely on there. 
and then you can put your tape on top. Now it's appropriate to check for blood return prior to putting all of the tape on, but I was pretty confident that I was in the port and so I wanted to put the tape on to protect the sterile field. So you can see when you pull back that, that we have this clear pink tinge um, because that's what we have in this dummy, but that's my blood return on there. And when you go to push any kind of fluid in there, you should feel absolutely no resistance. If you don't get blood return, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is to grab a saline syringe and do what we're teaching everyone to do with de-access, which is a pulsatile or a push pause to try and move any fibrin sheath or anything that may have formed on that line. So I have a tendency not to remove the bubble in these salines. I just put my syringe upwards so that I don't put that air right in the port. And you're going to go every ML, you're gonna push, 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 push with a lot of force to try and move that out. Something else that you may wanna do is um, have the patient do some positioning. If they're sitting up like this, you may want them to lay back. You may want them to look in one direction or another put an arm up, try and change the positioning of the line in their body. Maybe it's pulling on the vessel wall and that's why you're not getting blood return. If you are still having trouble with blood return after attempting um, to troubleshoot it, you can move on to the TPA policy, which does require a doctor's order. TPA is um, two milligrams that you will infuse in the line for 30 minutes and you will have it sit in the line for 30 to 60 minutes, at which point you can check for blood return. If you don't have blood return at that point, you'll wanna let it sit for another 90 minutes. So if you're in the emergency room, there's no way you're gonna do this for two hours and then potentially repeat for another two hours. So you're probably gonna go ahead and start an IV. But if you wanted to maintain the line and get it patent while you're doing other things, that would be appropriate. Um, you can repeat TPA twice, so after that initial two hours, you can go through the whole process again. And if you still don't have blood return at that point, the next step is uh, to do an imaging study, um, a, a line flow study to make sure that the placement is correct. And that's it for access.